Hey friends, it's Carol, Saltbox Stitcher, back for my second quilt video. So, um, I, first of all, I wanna thank everybody for my great comments that I got from my first quilt video. That was kind of overwhelming, so I just really appreciate it. Y'all are so kind, and um, I've been doing this for a long time, so I have a lot to show. And this time I'm going to show uh, patriotic and or red, white, and blue quilts. And I say white, you know, it could be cream, whatever. Um, especially since this is Memorial Weekend and um, we'll be honoring those who have served. And so I thought it was appropriate to do um, patriotic quilts, um, this, this second one. So first of all, I'm gonna talk a little bit about what I've been working on. Uh, there's a lot of things I haven't been working on. I did not yet get back to my dear Jane. I did not yet get back to um, my blockheads, Moda blockheads four. So those are all kind of sitting waiting for me, but that's all right. Uh, I, I'll get to it when I get to it. So mostly what I've been working on, and the first part of this, what I've been working on is not necessarily all patriotic, but the main thing I've been working on, and I showed you this pattern last time, this is called Vintage Reserve. It's a, it was a Moda pattern that went with the line of fabric Vintage Reserve by, Mo, by Minnick and Simpson. A lot of times we think of Minnick and Simpson as being red, white, and blue. And I do have a few quilts that I've made that are red, white, and blue that they've done. But this is Vintage Reserve. And um, I did put a different color border on, but um, let's see if I can show. We'll try to insert a picture, but for now, let me just see if I can show you what this quilt looks like. There again, I can't near get the whole thing, but I'll just give you a little bit of an idea. So the last time I had a quilt video, I showed you some of the blocks that I had finished, but now I, you can see I did all the flying geese. And then I added a red border. And actually by adding a red border, I really think it sort of made it um, kind of Christmassy. The green is not near as bright as it looks on this one block. So we'll take a full picture of it so you get the idea. But I have finished this and I, I don't have a backing specific for it, but I have, um, a couple two yard pieces that I'm going to be um, piecing and then I have a lot of leftovers from piecing the block. So I'll, I'll do a pieced backing. So I have that. The other thing that I've done a little bit of, um, I like to do mini quilts. And one of these episodes of my quilt videos, I'll show you all mini quilts. But this is one that I finished. This was part of the Temecula Quilt Company. They used to have a um, mini quilt, monthly mini quilt uh, program, and I had signed up for that. I still need to sew the binding down on the back, which you'll see a lot of these quilts have yet to have the binding sewn down. But I thought this was cute. It's just a little nine patch and um, fussy cut the sashing that goes in between. So I finished piecing that one and I actually quilted that one on my sewing machine because I wanted straight lines and I don't really do straight lines on my long arm. And then I finished piecing this one, which was also a Temecula. You can see I have this quilter's tape. It's just, um, it's like masking tape. It comes off. And the reason I have it on here is because that's going to be my lines. For quilting because again I'm going to quilt this on my sewing machine. So these are little churn dash blocks and it's all the um, reproduction 1800 Civil War reproduction fabrics and again that was one of the kits. I have about six more kits of those that I'm eventually going to get finished. And then um, this is another one that I've been working on. This was a country sampler um, quilt kit called Sweet Summer Breeze. And 
and I think they still have the pattern. I don't know if they still have the kit. So I have some of the blocks finished, some of the red ones. So there's red blocks and blue blocks. And um, this is the setting squares. This is the fabric for the setting squares. It's really pretty. I think this is part of Jeannie from Country Sampler. I think this is part of one of her lines. So I have lots of parts and pieces. I actually have them in a container, but I took them out to show you. So here's some of the blues. It's just a real soft, soft blues. So this is what I'm going to be working on next. So now I get to trim down all those half square triangles and put them together. Um, the next thing that I'm going to be working on is this one. Where is the pattern? <laughs> it's called Betsy and Company. I know I'm going to find it because I had it a minute ago and... Now it's flown the coop, but this is part of the instruction. So it's all flags with a stripe, um, a little tiny stripe that goes in for the sashing in between. So this is the fabric for the in between. You can see the stripe. And then the pieces I've already ironed them. Oh, here it is. Here's the pattern. See, told you I'd find it. <laughs> and it's called Betsy and Company Country Sampler. They should still have this pattern. They may still have the kits. Tammy Basket Nut has this finished. I think she had a picture on Instagram where she showed it finished. Quite a few people have done this one. And it's really not hard. It's all one and a half inch strips. And these are the fabrics. They're very similar to that sweet summer breeze. So I've ironed all my, I've ironed all the fabrics. There's the reds. And the blues, There's some darker blues, almost to navy. And then some of the lighter, more uh, delft blue. And then the lights, low volume, backgrounds, whatever. So that's ready to be cut out. And then I'm gonna show you a quilt in a little bit, but I had some pieces left, some blocks left from a quilt that I made. And they're log cabin blocks. Oops, if I show you the right side, not the wrong side. So I have quite a few blocks left, orphans, whatever you want to call them. And then I have some sashing strips that I've put together and I have some reds that I've pre-cut. So something, I'm going to do something with these blocks. I think there's enough to make maybe a table topper or something like that. So I want to take advantage of these extra blocks that I made. It's always kind of fun. You know, when you cut strips to make something, especially like a log cabin like this, you're going to have extra strips left. So it's fun to put them together and then have those kind of orphan blocks to play with. Uh, the next thing that I want to work on, and I think I showed you this in my first quilt video. I'm sure I did. Um, I am going to pre-wash some of these. I don't normally pre-wash fabrics at all. But I've had some old Marcus Brother fabrics, which is what these are, that I've had a little bit of um, issue with when they're washed. A little bit of bleeding. So I may pre-wash some of these. Um, what helps if I show you the pattern? It's salute to our veterans, so this is appropriate for this weekend. And they're all simple nine patches. And then the flag fabric goes around the edges. I I'm pretty sure I showed you this last time. So 
I'm going to cut this one out and the one I just showed you, get those cut out. And then, then whenever I have a half hour, hour or so, I can sit down in peace and they're all ready to go. The in-between fabric in between these um, nine patches is one that's got little tiny flags on it. And then the fabrics for this are all reproduction fabrics. It was a kit that I bought years ago. Blues, reds, there's actually even a few, um, like there's a, one that's got a little bit of purple, there's a little bit of green. So when you do the blocks for the nine patches, which is what's all in the middle here, you use all different fabrics. And I love the way some of them have a light background and then some of them have like a dark background. Very fun. So that's on my radar. And then this is an old country sampler pattern, 2008. This one is called Flags Over the Colonies. It's kind of hard to see up close. And I don't have the original fabric that was used. It was like a toile that was, um, I think it had George Washington on it. But I pulled some other fabrics that I want to use. This is um, this is this like historic fabric that has all these pictures of different people. Jamestown. This fabric was originally Moda, and it was actually called We the People, and it was by Brent or Sandy Gervais, which is Brenda Gervais' sister. So you have flags, you have. Um, it's just just fun, fun fabric. And then some of the ones that I've put to complement that, I have some golds with stars, backgrounds. I have reds. This one looks a little orangey on one of them. I have some blues, some really cool blues stars and stars so that's what I'm gonna play with working on I have quite a bit of yardage that I can make it work please stay tuned to the end of this video too I forgot to say that at the beginning because we're gonna um, or I'm going to I'd say we because my husband helps me so much he does all the technical stuff most of you know that so um, I'm going to announce something at the end, so that's a tease for you to stay tuned to the end. I also have this pattern from Country Sampler. It's called Long May She Wave, and you can either make it into a table runner or a square table mat, so I may be pulling fabrics for this. I, I think it'd be fun all through June, even into July, to be sewing on some of these, piecing some of these patriotic ones. I have another one. I don't know if I'll get to that this this year. This is called Flag Day Farm. This is a Moda University pattern. I used to get a lot of these Moda patterns whenever a new line would come out when I worked at the quilt store. So these are all Minnick and Simpson fabrics. These are low volume backgrounds. reds and blues so that one would be really easy to make it's you just strip piece and then you just cut your um equilateral triangles out of it flag day farm i don't know if some of these may still be on moda's website i don't know i don't know that's something you'd have to check it out okay um Next, I'm gonna just show you some of my quilts that I've made over the years. Uh, a couple of them have been um, gifts to me because we used to exchange gifts at our at the quilt shop where I worked at. And so um, I don't necessarily know the patterns on these, but I just thought you would be interested in seeing just a, sm a short little parade of some of the quilts I've made that are red, white, and blue. 
this was a Temecula um, quilt company. It was one of the monthly minis. I love to set these kind of around. They're really cool too to like put on, you know, a bunch of them on a wall. It's the spool pattern. So that one's fun. This is really old. Um, this kind of, some of these got my interest going years ago for little mini quilts. There was a company called Thimbleberries and they designed for uh, RJR Fabrics. Uh, I can't remember her name. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, she did a lot of decorating books and these little quilts, they used to come in little cans and you had all the stuff you needed to make the quilt kit except the backing. And so, yeah, I applicate. I did these years ago, probably late 80s, early 90s, maybe mid 90s. So that one was kind of fun reminder. This one was a paper pieced. I know a lot of people refer to paper piecing like hexagons, but this was paper pieced. This was by a company I think called Flag Farm. And so all of this was um, where you have a foundation paper and then you sew your pieces to the foundation paper. It's old, 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 old. But again, a fun one. The flag hearts, the stars, and the Uncle Sam. This one I made recently, sort of recently. This was again a Temec... I think, no, I think this was a... This was a Kim Deal kit, I believe, that I got somewhere in my travels. And this one I quilted on my long arm. I can tell the ones I quilted on my long arm are kind of stiffer. This is really old. This is really old. This one is, um, there used to be a company called Little Quilts out of Georgia. And this was one of their kits, the applique hearts flag. I usually put this in my kitchen and then I put the dough bowl on top of it. It's really dated, but I still like it. Another one that's really old. This was by Country Threads. And this was, a it's an Uncle Sam banner with the flags all the way around. Again, made this years ago, in the 90s for sure. And that one just has like a star fabric on the back. Um, I don't think I made this one. I think this was either a gift. I think this was a gift. A friend made this. Like I said, we used to do exchanges. So it has the blue toile and then the um, stars with the red setting triangles. So that makes a great table runner. Here's another one I did years ago. Um, Just a flag, stars. I want to say the flag was, I don't, I think you just cut odd, odd stripey kind of uh, strips, not stripey, but um, kind of odd shaped strips and then just sewed them together randomly. That was fun. Uh oh something fell. This one was kind of a disappointment. Um, I think, again, this was a company called Flag Farm. And at the time, I quilted this on my sewing machine, and I used a variegated thread on the top. And you can see where there's white. There's also, this needs to be washed. There's some something on it. You can see where it's 
got white threads. Well, the variegation on the quilting thread would help us. I'd hold it upright. Here we go. The variegation on the quilting thread, and I've thought about taking it all out, but I may just um, see like these squiggles up here. These are from the quilting thread. And at one time I tried to start taking it out and that was kind of tedious. I thought about tea dyeing it and seeing if um, if the white threads, it looks like it just has white threads stuck on it, but it's actually the quilting because it was a variegated thread. And I'd love to, to redo it because I love the pattern and I love the, the quilt. It makes a great table topper. And I've often thought about just throwing it in some writ dye and seeing if some of those, um, you know, those white threads kind of turn tan, so at least they're not so noticeable. <laughs> this one is one that I made a while ago, but I recently quilted it on my, mich on my long arm. It's uh, a country threads pattern. And it's these four houses. I don't remember the name of the pattern. But there's four houses. I still have to sew the back. I used an old fabric for the backing. And I have a lot of quilts that are not quilted. So we'll talk about that more at the end of this video. So stay tuned. So it has the four houses and there were actual like pieced flat, not pieced, actual printed flags that came in the kit. That's fun. It's a little dated, but I still like it. Okay. And then I'm going to show you, this is not going to be a long video. My husband never believes me when I say that, but it's just different with quilts than it is with cross stitch. Cross stitch, I can you know, spend 10 minutes talking about what thread, what linen, and all that, where quilts is, is a little bit more of a parade. Um, I wish I could tell you what line of fabric. I kind of thought it might be Blackbird fabric, but I don't know. Um, let me see if I can get, I can show you this one. It has the big stars with the nine patches in the middle. And there's an, the alternate block helps to make that star within a star look. You can see it. This one's a little bit worn. Very fun. This is one of my very, 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 very one more very, very favorite quilts. This was a, um, gosh, I made this years ago. This was a Cindy Blackberg pattern. I don't remember the name of it. I think I gave the pattern away. I first saw it at a, at a quilt show and I tried to mimic the pattern as much as I could. I mean the sample as much as I could. It's a nice size. And this one I have hanging in my bedroom on the quilt rack. The piecing was a little tricky because it's had some Y seams. This one, again, another one that doesn't have the binding all the way sewn down. And this is another one that I recently quilted. This was a country sampler, kind of a mystery block of the month, I think. And so you did so many different parts at a time. So you have the stars. So many of these are just folded up. It's nice to get them out once in a while and air them out. I mean, it's not, it's not really patriotic, but anything that's red, white, and blue kind of goes in that category at my house. 
patriotic. The fabric was provided because it was a block of the month or a, it was a mystery block of the month. So you didn't really know what the final quilt was going to look like. But it has these deep reds, deep red for the border. And then the back, I pieced the back in different, different fabrics. That's the swirls quilting that I do. So this was quilted on my long arm, even though I made it quite a while ago. This one is, um, I made this sort of recently, probably within the last five years. Again, the binding's not sewn down. I have a lot that I need to just sit down and do. Every time I sit down to do handwork though, I like this. <laughs> I prefer to stitch, so that's what happens. Susan Aki, Yard Girl, she recently made this quilt. Again, it's a Minican, Moda Minikin Simpson line of fabric. And it's the nine patch of nine patches set on point with this beautiful red floral for the border. And again, I piece the back using strips from the front, which is fun. I love that look, you know, and it uses up fabric, especially if you have extra pieces. I guess I'm gonna go this way, sorry. So it's almost like you have two quilts. Not really, but sorta. This one, I cannot find the pattern. Oh, sorry, that's going to get really loud. My face was right in the microphone. I can't find the pattern for this one, but um, this was originally or recently a country sampler kit. They may still have kits for this. It's like a giant nine patch. And then, of course, there's nine patches within the nine patch. Stars. I love that block. And then the stripes. And this is a square quilt, so it fits nice on a table. A couple more. This was a banner. I wish I knew who, what pattern this was. Again, I made this years ago. How's the America? Oh, gosh, I can't. it was a block of the month, but I don't know if I got the fabric with it or not. It's kind of weird. I need to make some sort of a hanger for the back so I can hang it. Because it's kind of hard to hang when it, with the curved on the top. But I love it. The eagle. Lady Liberty. Uncle Sam, very fun. There originally was a store in Kansas City called Rustic Yearnings, and I, whenever I would go there, they've since closed a long time ago, I would uh, sign up for different block of the months, and I'm pretty sure that's where that one came from. This was a gift one of my friends when we did the quilt exchanges made for me, and I love this. You can see the secondary circular kind of pattern that it makes with the stars. It's one of my very favorites. I think it's the only one I had, you know, it's like when you do the next year's exchange, you did, did I already have this name? Cause it's like secret. I think this is one of the only ones. She was the owner of the store and I think this is the only one that she made me. It was very fun. We used to, we used to have um, two exchanges a year. The first one would be or one of them would be around Christmas. Obviously we'd celebrate Christmas. And then in the summer we would have, um, we would celebrate, um, we'd call it a birthday celebration, regardless when your birthday was. And we would exchange, there are probably like 12 of us and we would exchange names. This is another one I made years ago. Another one that could be used as a table topper. 
I have no idea the pattern of these. You know, some of these could have been in a book. I just, some of them could have been a kit and I passed the pattern on. I just don't, I don't know. Um, the next one, this was a gift that someone, again, in our exchanges, the scale actually watches my videos. I was talking to her Thursday. So Nancy, here's your beautiful quilt you made me years ago. I mean, we used to go all out. I love this one. 2002. And we did everything. We quilted them, bound them. You gave finished quilts and you got a finished quilt. It was so fun. But you had six months, you know, because you drew a name. And the very last one I'm going to show you Oops, something else I'm going to show. It's one that I made last year. And I think at one time I showed this on my stitching video, and I had more comments about this quilt. It's huge, huge. It hangs on a quilt rack in my bedroom. It's all log cabins. And this is with the one that I had the um, leftover blocks from. You can't really get the effect until you see it like full out because the flags kind of interrupt that zigzag pattern of the log cabins. So there's three flags. So this one, and I just meandered this on my long arm. It doesn't really need any fancy quilting. Another one that I pieced, use my extra pieces for the back. Oops, which way am I going here? This way. And this is actually gold, kind of a tan gold that I used on the back. So that's all I have to show you. I have a lot of red quilts, like red and cream. I have a lot of blue and cream, like monochromatic type quilts. But I didn't include those. The red and cream ones I usually get out at Christmas. The blue ones I'll, I'll put in with Patriotic when I decorate, but they're really not red, white, and blue. They're just like blue. So I forgot I had this wonderful book, The American Flag. I bought this years ago. This is like a coffee table book that I love. Oh, I know, I was gonna show you one more thing. So this book, Collections One, is an old book by Red Wagon. And this is where that quilt, I believe it was also in another book, but this is what that quilt looks like on the pattern. So again, Collections One, Red Wagon. And it has some fabulous, these are old, these are from the 80s but they're just classic quilt books. If you can get a hold of them, do, because they've got a lot of treasures in them. Um, the other thing I was going to talk about, so whatever reason I want to put with it, age, <laughs> wanting to have some extra spending money for framing from some of my cross stitch, cross-stitch pieces, um, retreat money, whatever, pay off bills, whatever. Um, I've decided to sell some of my quilts. So let me tell you what I'm going to sell. I have somewhere between 35 and 40 quilts that are pieced that are not quilted. Now for me to use my time and my batting to make a, to finish quilting a quilt on my long arm when it's not my colors anymore I just don't want to do that so I'm going to we're going to have a special video and it may not be till I come back from my June retreat so within the next month ish 
Yeah, within the next month. I'm going to do a parade of quilts that I want to sell. And here's what I'm going to do. Because they're pieced, and I'm going to show you just two of them. Because they're pieced, and I have the backing, and the binding is ready to put on. So I'm going to offer two options. The first option is if you want to just buy it, you know, it's not a quilt. It's just a piece top. But it does come with the backing and the binding. So let's say your next door neighbor does a lot of quilting and she'll quilt it for you for free. Or let's say your best friend is a um, long arm quilter and she'll quilt it for you. So I'm going to offer these either as is. I'm going to call it as is. So just as a tease, here's one of them that I want to sell. And the binding on this is striped, so it's really a cute binding too. It's just not my colors. I have nowhere in my house to put this. I don't want to spend the time away from customer quilts. So it'll be one price if you want to just buy it as is. And you'll you have everything except batting to finish it, so you'd need to buy your own batting. Maybe you quilt on your sewing machine, whatever. And then there'll be another price if you want it completed into a quilt, which I would do. I would invoice you when it's finished. Um, allow like four to five weeks for me to finish quilting it. I will hand sew the binding down. It'll be completely finished quilt. Obviously, it'll be cost more than if you buy them as is. So I'm going to start with probably... I think my husband's going to build a website. He's already been working on it, and we'll sell them through the website. Not 100% sure, but it'll be PayPal only. Not sure about the shipping. I would not have a problem sending overseas, but shipping will be, you know, an issue with that as far as the cost. But whatever. Um, I'm only doing 10 to 12 initially because it's going to take me a while to finish them for the people that want them finished. Here's another one. This is just a simple pattern. It's very soft fabrics. Most of these are um, somewhere between lap size and twin. This would probably be considered a twin. Well, no, this one's folded, so this one might, might be a full size. Am I showing the wrong side? Yeah, I am. There we go. So it's just soft florals. And I will decide the quilting because I do edge to edge quilting. So um, it's not gonna be any custom quilting if, I just, if you want me to finish it. So that is the announcement I wanted to make at the end. And so be looking on the lookout for my special video to introduce some of the quilts that I'm going to be selling. I have so many quilts. My kids don't want them. You know, I just, it's silly for them just to be hanging in a closet. So that's my strategy. So um, in one of my old Bibles, I keep a very special letter. So with it being Memorial Weekend, I thought I would share this. Sometimes we overlook Memorial Weekend as being just a day off or um, a day for the races, which is fun for people that go, a day for grilling, a day for um, getting together with family. But I hope that in your heart somewhere you will find um, time to reflect on what Memorial Day really symbolizes, which is and celebrates those who have served in our country. Um, my dad was of what they call the greatest generation, which was the World War II generation. I couldn't find a picture of just him, but he, this is my dad and my mom when they got married. They were married in 1939. When my dad passed away, we'll see if I can, we'll see if I can read this. When my dad passed away, my uncle, his younger brother, wrote letters to, there were four of us, my brother, two brothers and a sister. And he wrote letters, and I won't read the whole letter, but um, my dad did not serve. And I'll, I'll um, read some of this and you'll, 
He was a man who had so many misfortunes in life from childhood with such bad lungs, the doctor said he could not live to adulthood. adulthood. My dad died when he was 77. Remembering the chills he had as a child, so bad with all the blankets on him, mom could, all the blankets mom could find, he still had the chills so bad he shook the whole bed. When we went down to gather to be inducted into the service for World War II, and he was rejected. <laughs> because of his lungs, he was so disappointed, but took up the reins and almost single-handedly kept our business alive through those rough years so we had jobs when we came back home. So my dad had two brothers. They all worked in the family business, which was um, outdoor advertising. They did a lot of sign painting and billboards and that kind of thing. And for him to say that even though my dad was not able to serve because of his lungs, he had a lung disease called bronchiectasis from the time he was a child. And I can remember my mom saying they took out huge life insurance policies on him when they had us kids because they didn't think he would survive to adulthood or to raise the kids. So anyway, long story short, that to me, even though he didn't serve, is a reminder for all of those who stay home and do what needs to be done for the rest of the country. So anyway, whoo! So have a happy Memorial Day. I hope you're doing well. I hope you get some time to reflect on some of these um, important times in our history and um, just celebrate people that are in your life who have served or maybe stayed back home to keep the fires burning. So anyway, hope you all are doing well and I will be back at some point for another quote video, but I'll be back next week for another stitchy video. So love you. Bye.